Finally, our last grouping of animals are the chordates. The chordates include humans. Humans are in this category as well. All chordates have four key things. When we look at the embryos of chordates, so embryos this, um, perhaps even before the organism is born, um, what we will see in the embryo stage is that they all have a dorsal hollow nerve cord. Dorsal just means it's on the back side of the body as opposed to ventral would be the belly side. So dorsal on the back, there is some type of a nerve cord and then right next to that nerve cord, between the nerve cord and the digestive tract, um, there is something called a notochord. The notochord is just a flexible rod. In people, this ends up becoming the discs between our vertebrae. Um, but they all, all, all chordates have some type of a notochord. All chordates in the embryo stage, they have what are called pharyngeal slits. Those are just grooves along the pharynx. Those may or may not persist into adulthood. And then all chordates have uh, what's called a post-anal tail, um, in, again, in the embryo stage, may or may not be present in the adult stage. So starting off with the invertebrate chordates. So chordates that do not have a backbone. Two examples, uh, tunicates, these are also called sea squirts. These live in the water, they're stationary, they stay put, and when they are scared, they can squirt water. That's why they're called sea squirts. Okay, so one example of an invertebrate chordate. The other example is a lancelet, which you can see on the right. Lancelets kind of wiggle backwards into the gravel and they just sort of hang out there and they filter their food out from the water. Um, they do not have a backbone, but they do have those four key characteristics uh, that all chordates have in common. So again, dorsal hollow nerve cord. Um, they've got a notochord, that flexible rod right there, notochord. Um, they have a post-anal tail, this whole section back here. It's a tail that exists after the anus on the back end of the animal. So post-anal tail and then pharyngeal slits. So really clear, clearly can, all four of those things can really be clearly be seen in the lancelet body. For vertebrate chordates, let's move on to these. So um, animals that do have a backbone, chordates that do have a backbone, Okay, we're moving into the world of, of fish here. You know, there are um, hagfish and lampreys. These are fish that are jaw jawless. They do not have a jaw. Um, so when we look at their mouths, very different style of mouth. Instead of having a jaw that hinges, um, instead they have sort of these teeth arranged in rings instead. Um, cartilaginous fish, this includes things like sharks. Sharks have a flexible skeleton. Their skeleton is made of cartilage, and that's another example of a vertebrate chordate. Okay, um, and then we also have fish that have a bony skeleton, so we call those the bony fish. The reason that their skeletons are very rigid is because they are reinforced with calcium, much like our skeletons are. Let's move from the water onto the land. So terrestrial vertebrates. Amphibians. The word amphibians is derived from amphibios, which means living a double life. Amphibians have a mixture of aquatic and terrestrial adaptations in their bodies, um, things that allow them to survive in water for some of their lifetime and on the land for other parts of their lifetime. Their eggs do not have shells. So they produce eggs, but they don't produce any shells around their eggs. And so for that reason, the eggs have to be kept in water. If they were on land, they would dry out very quickly. So that wouldn't work. Um, so the eggs have to be in water. And then when the larvae hatch out, they undergo a metamorphosis into an adult stage. So think like with frogs, they start out as tadpoles and then they undergo a major body change um, and end up being frogs in the end and frogs live on land. So those are some uh, amphibians, pictures of amphibians on the slide. Another type of terrestrial vertebrate is the reptile. And reptiles, the, the characteristic thing about a reptile versus an amphibian is that, well, for one, it lives on the land, um, but number two, um, when they produce eggs, their eggs do have a shell around them. So a fluid-filled egg that's enclosed by a shell, and that shell is very protective. Um, this means that the egg doesn't have to be kept in the water, rather it can be kept on the land, and the shell will protect it and keep that fluid inside. 
amniotes, um, like reptiles, come in a couple of different varieties. Some of them are cold-blooded, others are warm-blooded. What that's referring to is just how they generate their body heat. So some, the cold-blooded animals, these have to be heated by the rays of the sun um, rather than by just getting energy from the breakdown of food. And so they have to have that um, that sunshine exposure in order to warm them up. Lizards are a good example of that. Warm-blooded animals, like people are warm-blooded animals, um, we can use metabolic heat just generated from the breakdown of food molecules internally. Birds are another example of a warm-blooded animal. Finally, the mammals. All right, so mammals. Um, what is it that's characteristic of mammals? Two things. Number one, they have mammary glands, which is why they're called mammals. Uh, mammary glands produce milk. And then number two, mammals have hair. May or may not be all over the body, but um, they've got hair somewhere, and that hair provides some insulation. Mammals come in three different groupings. The platypus is kind of in a group all on its own. Platypuses are very unusual animals. They're called monotremes. They hatch from eggs. Um, and then they mature with their mom right there. Two cute little platypuses right there with their mother. Uh, marsupials. Marsupials are embryonic at birth. And then they mature in a pouch with the mom. Um, and then eutherians. Eutherians are fully developed at birth. So a good example of that would be a horse. We're looking at a foal right here that's just been born. Um, for the marsupials and the eutherians, both of these during, during pregnancy... Uh, the embryo is nurtured by a placenta, and that's something that sets these animals apart from others.